welcome to today's lecture today we will see how the saline and alkaline soils are reclaimed in earlier class we have seen the effects of water logging as the increase in salinity and alkalinity of soil so today we will see the remedial measures for reclamation of saline and alkaline soils so let us start schoon over the scientist in his study of soil problems in india has listed the following technical requirements for reclamation of saline and alkaline soils first is the adequate drainage if drainage is proper then salinity ultimately decreases then second is availability of sufficient water to meet crop use and also leach the salt below the root zone in the soil if the salts are leached below the root soil the soil root zone there ultimately the problem of salinity is overcome third is better than average soil management to include perfect land leveling good bunding for irrigation and advanced ergonomic practices fourth is protection and reclamation to be taken in large blocks and lastly irrigation water should be of good quality if the water used for irrigation itself is having salts then ultimately it will increase salinity of the soil if the water is pure then ultimately there will be lowest possibility of alkalinity and salinity of the soil saline soil reclamation and management saline soils in which the soluble salt contains appreciable amounts of calcium and magnesium do not develop into alkali soils by the action of leaching water the reclamation is comparatively easy in such soils the main problem is to leach the salts downward below the root zone and out of contact with subsequent irrigation water if they do not get contact with irrigation water then ultimately the problem of salinity is avoided following methods may be used for a removal of salts so let us see the methods one by one first is the mechanical methods by flooding and leaching down the soluble salts the leaching can be done by first ponding the water on the land and lowering it to stand there for a week most of the double salts most of the soluble salts would leach down below the root zone after a week standing water dissolved with soluble salts is allowed to escape such two to three treatments are given to reclaim highly saline soils sometimes gypsum is also added to flood water when the soluble salts are low in calcium to check development of alkalinity then scraping of the surface soil when the soluble salts accumulate on the soil surface scraping helps to remove salts this is a temporary cure and salinity again develops on such lands then second is cultural methods crop soil and water management first is providing proper drainage if the soil is not free draining artificial drains are opened or tile drains laid undergo underground to help wash out the salts second is use of salt free irrigation water salt free good quality of irrigation water should be used then proper use of irrigation water it is known that as the moment as the amount of water in the soil decreases the concentration of salts in the soil solution increases thus moisture should be kept at optimum field capacity next is planting or sowing of seeds in the furrow the salt concentration even in smaller amounts is most harmful to the germinating seeding seedlings water generally evaporates from the highest surface by capillary and hence these points have maximum salts concentrations if the seed or seedlings are planted inside the furrows they escape the zone of maximum salt concentrations and thus 
can germinate and develop properly during their early growth stage. Then use of acidic fertilizer. In saline soil, acidic nature of fertilizers that is ammonium sulfate should be used. Use of organic manures. The organic manures have very high level holding capacity. When sufficient amount of these manures are added, the water holding capacity of soil increases and as a result, the conductivity of the soil solution decreases. Plowing and leveling of the land. Plowing and leveling of the land increases the filtration and percolation rate. Therefore, salts leach down to the lower levels. Retardation of water evaporation from the soil surface. Water may be conserved in the soil retarding the water evaporation. Thus, salts may remain in the lower level with the water. Growing of salt tolerant crops. High salt toler tolerant crops are paragrass, barley, sugar beet etc. Moderately salt tolerant crops are wheat, rice, sorghum, maize, flax etc. And the low salt tolerant crops are beans, radish, white clover etc. Sensitive crops to the uh, salts are tomato, potato, onion, carrot etc. Then reclamation and management of alkali, saline alkali and non-saline alkali soils. Alkali soils can, cannot be reclaimed by mere flooding the land. In the case of saline alkali soils, flooding is likely to do more harm. Leaching, flooding down of soluble salts make the soil alkaline. Only sodium clay remain in the soil. Soil gets dispersed and become compact, impervious. In alkali, that is non-saline alkali soils, exchangeable sodium, sodium clay, is so great as to make the soil almost impervious to water. But even if water could move downward freely in alkali soils, the water alone would not leach out the excess exchangeable sodium. The sodium cation must be replaced by calcium cation and then leach downward. Following chemical methods are used for reclaiming the alkali soils. So let us see the chemical methods to which are used for the reclamation of alkali soils. First is application of gypsum. By cationic exchange, calcium is often used to replace sodium in alkali soil. If the soil has no reserve of calcium carbonate, the addition of gypsum that is calcium sulphate is necessary. When the gypsum is used as a reclaiming agent, calcium replaces the exchangeable sodium and converts the clay back into calcium clay that is Ca-clay. Then use of sulphur. In the case of alkali soil that contains free calcium carbonate, addition of sulphur, sulfuric acid, iron and magnesium, iron and aluminium sulphate, green manure that is which produces acidity etc. reclaim the soil very effectively. The acidity developed during the course of their decomposition of soil neutralizes alkalinity. At the same time brings calcium carbonate into solution which then reacts with the sodium clay and converts it into calcium clay. When sulfur is sprayed on the soil, it is oxidized to sulfuric acid which converts sodium carbonate into sodium sulfate. If calcium carbonate is not present in the soil, it should be added artificially when sulfur is used for reclamation. The next method is addition of organic matter. The addition of organic matter increases acidity, thus helping in lowering the pH. Organic matter is especially helpful where sulfur is added to correct the alkalinity. The organic matter supplies food for the bacteria that stimulates the oxidation of sulfur to sulfate form. The combination of sulfur, organic matter and gypsum has also been used with success. Some cultural methods are also there which are used for reclamation of 
saline soils first one is leaching in this process the land is flooded with adequate depth of water the alkali salts present in the soil gets dissolved in this water with which percolate down to join the water table or drained away by the surface and subsurface drains the process is repeated till the salts in the top layer of the land are reduced to such an extent that some salt resistant crop can be grown this process is known as leaching high salt resistant crops like fodder bersim bajra etc are now grown on this leached land for one or two seasons or till the salinity is reduced to such an extent that an ordinary crop like wheat cotton citrus garden crops etc can be grown the land is then said to have been reclaimed then land drainage surface irrigation is a blessing only if it is practiced with great care only optimum amount of water should be supplied to the crop in accordance with the requirement of the crop and the properties of the soil must be given full consideration excess water which the root zone of the soil fails to absorb may percolate and help in raising the water table sometimes this gravity water may encounter impervious strata and may not be drained up to the water table as as explained earlier this excess water is not only a waste but may be harmful to the crop yield also if such conditions are likely to occur it becomes necessary that the excess water is removed and drained out from below the soil and discharged back either into a river a canal etc or somewhere else hence while designing a canal irrigation network it is sometimes desirable to provide a suitable drainage system for remo removing the excess irrigation water this may be necessary in areas of high water table and in river in river deltas when irrigation facilities are extended to such areas drainage system is also required for draining out the storm water and thus to prevent the percolation and to ensure easy disposal two types of drainage can be provided that is surface drainage and sub surface drainage called tile drainage or underground drainage these are explained below sub surface drainage or open drainage so we will see the types of drainage in next class it will be better to uh, discuss these types of drainage in the next class today we will stop here thank you for listening happy learning if you are having any doubt you can ask me on my email address dnpaitankarce at sanjeevani.org.in.